So you want to run a three phase motor on single phase power. You know, I might ask you why, but I don't need to know. First step, take out the key. You forget that's in there and you get this thing spinning at speed, you might take that to the teeth. Okay, so we got single phase power. This is 220 single phase, hot, hot, ground. We're gonna use the ground for safety. So what you would do is you're gonna have three legs of power for a three phase motor. All right, you're gonna take one leg, doesn't matter what. Oh, I should mention, this is a 230, 460 motor right now. I just grabbed it off the shelf. It was already wired at 460. You can start a three phase motor. Uh, well, here's, here's the thing about three phase. If it's a 230 motor and you start it at 230 volt three phase, they start off with full torque. If you start it wired at 460, and if you start it with 230, it actually takes a lot less amperage to start it. You don't get full torque out of it, you don't get full power, but they come up to speed slower, and they draw less amperage on startup. So sometimes with big motors here, I, you know, 50, 100 horses, we will start them wired at 460, but we'll fire them with 230 volt three phase. And then they start easier, and it doesn't, doesn't surge power around these places. So it's good to do. But anyway, I'm going to leave it at 460. It doesn't matter. So it's at 460, so I got three legs of power, just like a three phase motor. So I got 220 across the two terminals, so, you know, 120, 120. And then I got one leg that I don't have a power wire for, obviously. Ground is hooked. We're good there. So here's what you do. Start capacitor. This is a three horse motor. I'm going to use a 216C, which is a 216 to 259 microfarad. Put that there. It starts getting sketchy in here. Safety glasses. Why you'd want to do this, I'm not sure. There's better options. First one being a VFD. You can get them cheap. You know, you can get them eBay. 200 bucks or less for a motor this size uh, or if you're doing bigger motors get a rotary but this this will start them how much power they have after they're running I really don't know I've never actually tried to run one under a load it seems promising it almost seems like you could run something off of it I don't know if you had like a if you had like a 10 horse or a 5 horse laying around and you had a couple caps would it make three horsepower? I don't really know. Maybe that's some experiment you need to do in the future. Anyway, before I ramble on too much, so you take your, your other leg that you don't have power and you're gonna connect it to one side of your capacitor. Now, what you're also gonna do is now you're gonna unhook that because that's not what you want. And I'll show you why in a second. All right, so we're gonna leave the third leg alone. Just gonna set it here for now. I, this is not an instructional video, by the way. Don't do what I do. I'm just showing you the working concept. All right, one side of the cap hooked to this wire here. This wire, don't care what, it's gonna go to one of your power wires that you've already got. Okay, I'm just gonna piggyback onto that one. So right now, if you put power to this motor, all this thing's going to do is it's going to hum. It's not going to take off. It's not even going to try to take off. It's going to hum. You call that single phasing a motor. If you do that to a three phase motor, that's what burns them up because they sit there trying to run because they're getting two legs of power, but they're not, they're not getting that third leg and they need it to start because they don't have any start switches. Three phase motors naturally don't have any capacitors. It's a dead giveaway for three phase motors. So that's what this guy's gonna do. Right now, if I put power to it, it's gonna hum. This cap's not getting a circuit, so it's not gonna explode, it's not gonna do anything. I'll show you, I'll bump it that away. Could you hear that? It went, it just kinda, it just buzzes, and it doesn't pick a rotation. The shaft just kinda bounces. I'll do it again. 
Okay? No start. So here's the trick. If you have this capacitor getting power, if you take this lead right here that's connected to your third leg, and if you just take that and just touch it to that capacitor for a split second, it'll take off and run. It suddenly gets that jolt. But you're going to take that wire off right away. You don't want to leave that on there. That cap's going to go and it's going to hit the ceiling. Uh, my arms don't reach this far. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. Because I'm so far away from the breaker, I, I can do it. It'll be fine. See we're running. It didn't take off right away. There's actually a calculation for what cap size you need. I should look back into that. Give me a second. There's a, there's a there's a certain amount of microfarads you need per horsepower for motor starting. Let me find that for you quick. All right, I looked it up. It's 67 microfarads per horsepower. Okay. That's for a single phase motor though. I don't know what you need for a three phase motor. So we're gonna double down on my already two small capacitors. So the two 16s, we're gonna double them up. If we were at 67 microfarads per horsepower, I mean, we were right on the money for this size of motor. But it's not gonna be enough because it's a three phase motor, not a single phase. So I'm going to do this. I always tell you to discharge caps and look at me, not doing it. Almost got a little bit of a zap there. Okay. That's how you wire it. That's how I wire it. You don't do anything because this is not instructional. I'm going to do what I did before. Same thing except I'm running for the two caps. I don't want to match the motor one with the same lead. I want to go opposite. So I want to grab this one. Essentially all I did is double my capacitance. So now it's twice the size. I'm gonna do the same thing I did before and we'll see if she don't just take right off and run. You know when I told you it doesn't matter if you wired at 230 or 460? I think it does. Now it doesn't when you're starting it on three phase. It will start regardless. But when you're doing it this way, I think you actually have to wire it for 230. So let me make that swap. Okay, I got it wired for low voltage. Keep in mind, this is not something you typically do. This is just kind of an experiment. I've done this one time before. And I know it works, so I'm going to try it now. It's wired at 230, so the lower voltage. Um, nothing's really changed other than you just follow the plate and set your wires for where they need to be. Let's see what happens now. Yeah, that took right off and ran that time. It, it does make a difference when you're doing it like this, big time. You see how quick that took right off though? That thing fired right off and went. And it actually had a bit of a hop to it. It leads me to believe that you could probably run a load with this. The efficiency? Hard to say. Let's do an amp draw test. So this motor is rated 
rated at 4.5 for 230 volts, three phase. That's not going to have anything because we're not using that one. Let's use this one. 4.74. That is almost right in spec. That's pretty wild. I wonder if I can get away with just going to one capacitor now. Let's see. Okay, discharge it. What I did last time was bad. Learn from my mistakes. Okay. I'm going to simplify this. But if you have a bigger motor, you do need more capacitors. That's how you do it. Call it cobbling on a budget. See if it'll start. Yep. Took right off. Not as much hop though. I actually liked it better with this. Yeah. It potentially works. Now you'd say, is there a way that I can make this motor start itself so I don't have to do it? Yes, and if you want to watch it, it's a little bit more complicated, but maybe it doesn't have to be. Get you one of these. Motor starting relay. Good for 50 amps. Before you all go away, I'm going to show you something else really cool about this. This is the basis of a rotary phase converter. I'll show, you, I'll show you how that works, but let me do this first. Alright, so let me try to explain this to you. This right here, this terminal and this terminal is the coil. This is a normally closed contact on this terminal up here, this top one, which is T1. So T1 is closed right now, which means, which means it is these two right here are connected. They're connected right now. So there would be continuity between these two. And these two are your coil. So when you put 220 to these two right here, within a second or two, it'll actually open the contact here and here. So if you have your power to your motor, I'm grabbing the two power leads right here, which I got extended out to here. So you're putting power here, and here, as soon as you put power to it, it's going to put power to this, which this wire, So as soon as you put power to this, it's going to actually run power to your top terminal for a second or two, which if you follow the wire, now runs to the capacitor, and the other side of the capacitor goes into that third leg that you don't have. So this is going to momentarily fire the motor, and then it's going to snap out of the circuit. Let me show you that. It's not extremely electrical savvy, but I'm going to set it on this rag, that way nothing metal touches. Yeah, this is crude. It's an experiment, alright? Leave me alone. Fired right off. I didn't have to do anything. Switch did all the work for me. Pretty simple. Here's the part for that, if anybody else is doing any sort of cobbling. UMSR-50. I'm not a salesperson for these, but I keep them around here because sometimes I sub them in for like the centrifugal switches and the big motors. They come in handy sometimes. Nice thing is too, you hear that click? When you disengage power, it now puts power to that third leg and it acts like its own brake. It brings it down really quickly. I'll give you another start.
Yeah, you'd almost think you got a single phase motor there. Just takes off and runs. It would be interesting to put a load on that. The thing is, you can find three phase motors cheap everywhere, you know? Nobody wants them because they don't have three phase. I mean, the scrap yards are usually piled with these things. Pretty neat. I'm going to show you something about a phase converter now. Okay, I'm going to leave all this switch gear in place. Keep in mind that this right here is the one that runs to our switch. This is the third leg that I only momentarily put power to. The other two, constant power. Okay, I'm going to let it start and I'm just going to pull that off. Because it's not getting power anyway. This switch kicks out, it gives it nothing. Okay, you can pull this off. No ill effect, nothing at all. So now that leg's not hooked to anything, right? Who knows if you read this either? I mean, this camera's not awesome. Alright, don't touch anything you don't want to touch. Don't get your sleeves wrapped in nothing. Can you see that? I don't know. Okay, we got our two power wires. Should read 220, 240, somewhere around there. So I got 249. Alright, uh, to ground, came unhooked on me here, I see. So one of the hot wires, 125, the other hot wire. 126, okay? Third wire that was originally our power wire that's not hooked to anything. 170, 176. Right now, that third leg is generating power. I take one of my hot wires here and touch it to that. 225. You got three phase power. We took another motor and grabbed hot hot and that third leg that you're generating right now you made a rotary phase converter it's not a really efficient one right now there are some there's some how-to videos on there how to make these and add your own capacitors into them to make them higher efficiency because you need to balance out the voltages but that is the working concept of a rotary phase converter so I don't know, I just found it kind of cool, so hope you guys enjoyed.